many of you I mean, can relate to this? When I was a Northwestern student, I was constantly stressed out, I was really hard on myself, and I was always anxious and really, really worried about the future. How many of you guys can relate to that? Okay, cool. Yes, yes. It seems to be like, you know, it comes along with the purple, you know, it's like constantly being in a state of anxiety. Um, well, I can tell you how to get rid of anxiety. Are you interested? Yeah. Okay. So, it's only possible to be anxious if you're thinking about something in the future. Think about whatever you're anxious about. It's about something that hasn't happened yet, right? So, so much of combating anxiety is being in the present moment. I was always living in when then. When I get the job, then I'll be happy. When I get the guy, then I'll be happy. When I lose five pounds, then I'll have confidence. It was never about the now. I was always chasing after something. I love what I do. I love it. Uh, I would do it for free. And it all came out of my biggest perceived failures, my biggest heartache, and my biggest disappointments. So my key message to you is that we all have a plan, we all have expectations of the way we want life to go, and sometimes it doesn't. And oftentimes those failures, those big disappointments, are course corrections. You know, another door is opening. Um, and that's why I like talking about expectation hangovers, because when things don't go like we expected, we have to go through the motions of our disappointment and everything like this. But what I've realized is they're, they're a doorway. So have your goals, walk towards them, but try not to be too attached to them. And I think the best thing I can say is don't invest your personal sense of self-worth or emotional well-being in your goals. My life lesson that I learned in my 20s was that nothing external could make me happy. I had to do that on my own, that was an inside job. And for me, everything in my life had to kind of fall away for me to really learn that lesson. And that was the, the essence of my quarter life crisis and why I'm so passionate about helping people in their 20s because it's a myth that in your 20s you're supposed to have it all figured out. It's really the time when it, it's, you figure sort of yourself out. There seems to be a lot of fear of failure or doing things wrong. And I think we both would agree that we've learned our biggest lessons by failing or doing something wrong and not having someone there to rescue us, because that really is the only way that we learn. And one of the things that I coach people on a lot is answering the questions of what I call the 20s triangle. But now that I'm into my 30s, I realize these questions continue. They don't just end at 30. Um, I thought 30 was like some magical number when, you know, like you just you know, we figure it all out. And that doesn't really happen. But the questions are, who am I, what do I want, and how do I get it? Any of you asking yourself those questions? And, and usually the questions that we want to focus on are, what do I want and how do I get it? And we forget this who am I question. And who am I is an important question. And most of us answer that question with a role we play. You know, I'm a coach, I'm a daughter, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, whatever it may be. But that's not really who you are. And so often we get so caught up in the roles that we play in life that we forget about who we are really. There is no wrong choice. It's really just the choice that you make. Really, there is no wrong choice. And we were talking about this at our meeting, and it was one of the themes that came out, is just to make a choice, to move forward, to not look back, and then react and respond to whatever choice that is that you make. Because the paralysis of indecision just keeps you stuck.